All right, guys, let's do this. Let's get into my most recent marathon, which was the 2023 Tallahassee Marathon. And I think it all started, oh, hold on, let me, by the way, this is the medal, but where was I? Oh yeah, it all started with this. I went to the expo to pick up my number and I was given number 13. Now, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. And perhaps me getting number 13 was just a little foreshadowing, a little foreshadowing that I didn't see at the time. But that's the beauty of foreshadowing is that it's only after the fact that you go back and realize that it was foreshadowing. Look at this, number 13, is that lucky or unlucky? Now before we get into this whole race analysis, we're gonna go over some of my numbers, some of the stats. I just want you to know that ultimately, I'm very happy with how my race went. I got the race that I deserved. And just because it turned out to be a good race, the race was still, excuse my French, Inspectacle de Merde. I hope that doesn't get my video demonetized, but it was. And I've got a few reasons why the race went so poorly for me. And if you follow me on Strava, you saw my race when I posted it and I called it 2023 Tallahassee Marathon, a cautionary tale. And it was indeed a cautionary tale for all marathoners out there specifically new runners. Because if you haven't run a marathon, unfortunately you may fall into the trap and if you've run a few marathons, maybe you have fallen into this trap of starting off too quickly because you feel particularly good at the beginning of the race. Now, a marathon is a long way. We've got a finite amount of energy and we have to use it sparingly across that entire distance. So in a nutshell, I didn't do that at this race. Oh, by the way, this is also the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about successes and I definitely wanna hear about your setbacks. And also I do realize that me talking about a past race is a bit dry, but I don't know. I'm hoping that maybe you will learn something from this. At least use me as an example of what not to do when racing a marathon. So with that, let's, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start right off with me telling you my finish time. My finish time was three hours, 20 minutes, and 23 seconds. Now, all in all, that is not a terrible time. I'm not ultimately upset with that time. If I had run a different race, I would be incredibly proud of running a 3.20.23. Now let me just back it up to the day before the race. Now I did make a video telling you guys about my goals and my expectations and the predictions for the race. Stride is this little foot pod that goes on my shoe and it goes with me on every single run. Now the Stride uses my runs and predicted that I could run on a flat course a 2.55 marathon. I think it was a little less than that, 2.54, 50 something. Now, I know that's a little aggressive. I didn't expect to be able to run a 2.55 at all, but I was a little encouraged by seeing that number. Then I also looked at Chorus. I wear this Chorus Pace 2 on most of my runs. The Chorus actually said that I could run a marathon in three hours and one minute. Now, keep in mind, these predictions are on flat courses. The Tallahassee Marathon is not exactly flat. And then of course, my other prediction was by Metathon. Metathon actually goes into Strava and it uses all my Strava activities to come up with a number. And I think that prediction was somewhere around three hours and 13 minutes. Now in hindsight, the Metathon was probably the most accurate. At least it was the closest, but of course that's in hindsight. When I ran that number, I thought 313 was just way high. There was no way I was gonna run a 313. I was gonna be much quicker than that. Oh the hubris. So that's what I mean when I say that I got the race that I deserved. Now, let me tell you how it went down. My goal, based on those other predictions, was three hours and five minutes. Now, a couple of months ago, I ran three hours and 10 minutes at Jacksonville. Back in April at the Boston Marathon, I ran three hours and eight minutes and 30 seconds. The weather at Tallahassee was pretty beautiful. It was 49 degrees at the start. It was 62 degrees at the end. And I thought that was gonna be pretty good. I actually didn't have many worries about running at 3.05 until the gun went off and I started running. So let's go over to Strava right now and let's have a look at some of these stats. Oh, and by the way, I did use the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 for the Tallahassee Marathon. I had a good experience with those shoes at the Jacksonville Marathon. And I gotta say that the shoes worked exceedingly well. They are a good marathon racer. I can't fault the shoes for anything that happened. So at this point, you're looking at my first couple of miles of the race. We can see the map of the race. If I scroll down, I think this this right here, this chart right here, shows a pretty good indication of how the race kind of went south as my pace dropped as the race went on. Let's turn on heart rate. And again, that actually shows a pretty good indication of how my race went. That's gonna take a little more explanation, but we can see at the beginning here, we've got some hills, actually right here at the beginning, this is important, right here at the beginning, there is quite a big downhill. The gun goes off, you're immediately running downhill, and we can see here, my first mile split was 6.48. Now 6.48 is only a couple of seconds shy of the average pace for a three hour marathon. And guys, I'd be lying if I didn't think at that point when that first mile ticked over that, oh, 
maybe I'm gonna go sub three today. Again, the air at that point of the race was thick with hubris, but in my defense, it went away pretty quickly and we can see that mile two was a 722 mile, followed by a 708, a 707, then a 650, we had some downhill, but I wasn't actually running the race by pace. I was running by power. And with that, I wanna switch over to Stride. I wanna show you the Stride desktop and how Stride shows my race win. Now, when Stride made a prediction, they said that I was going to run at 93% of my critical power, which was 344 watts. Now, this is how Stride works. You don't have to take anything else into consideration. You just lock onto that number. And if you can stick at that number, then you will run somewhere within the range of predicted time that Stride gives you. In my build up to training, it did seem that 344 watts, it's just a little hot. It was a little hard for me to hold on to 344 watts, even when I was doing a long tempo still. I put my faith in Stride, but maybe Stride knows me better than I know me. It turns out that was a mistake. And I also wanna draw your attention to the elevation map on Stride. We can see it's just, it's a little more crunched up here on Stride. So the hills are more pronounced and wow, this is a, this is a big hill right here. But also I wanna draw your attention to this area in the middle right through here, because this is a fairly flat area of the course, and I was looking forward to this. But on Stride, you can see that it doesn't look exactly flat. Now, even on the flat portions of the course, like right here, there are a lot of ups and downs. And that was how I experienced it. Now, there were some flat areas, but ultimately the flat areas, for me at least, someone who trains in a very flat area, they didn't last long at all. Another incline was just around the corner. And because I was running by power, when I run uphill, my power increases. Like it takes more energy to run uphill. So when I was running uphill, I found it quite easy to lock on to that 344 watts. But when I was running downhill, because it's so much easier, you're using gravity to go in downhill, your power number is much lower. So you have to run a lot harder in order to meet that power number. I can't really keep up with my power recommendation going downhill. Now with that in mind, let's go to some of these downhill areas in the beginning. We can see here that my power is 309, 312. So this is an important one to look at. We can see here right at the beginning of the race, my power is 312, my target is 344, and yet my pace is 617 a mile. Now guys, I know that 617 a mile is way too quick for me to run at the beginning of a marathon, and yet, I was running hard, trying to get that number up to a 344, or at least close to it. And let me just draw your eyes down a little bit. We can see here that my power, this is my average power for the entire race, was 311 watts. That is substantially less than the 344 recommended. But we can also see that there was a very obvious decline in power and pace as the race went on from, I don't know, it almost looks like it started right around the halfway point, and then I just gradually slowed down. My power number kept getting lower. Let's just switch over to Strava again. Let's scroll back up and I wanna to go to the race analysis so we can see these mile splits a little better. Yeah, here we go. We've got the elevation chart right at the bottom. It actually looks quite flat on this chart. But yeah, through the half marathon mark, it, it wasn't too bad. It actually wasn't a bad race. Unfortunately, I knew by the time I got to the half marathon mark, I think it was around 1.34. I just crossed the halfway timing mat in 1.34.35. That I wasn't feeling how I needed to feel at the halfway point of a marathon. And obviously the numbers show that because it was just a gradual decline as the race went on until until about mile 21, mile 22 is where things really went south. And by south, I mean the pace. Because I dropped down to an 8.14, an 8.28, oh, it's just getting worse, 8.40, 8.51, 8.58. And we can see here that this 8.58 is a zone one active recovery. So my last mile was an active recovery pace. Now it also looks like I picked up the pace just a little bit to a zone two for that kick to the finish. But I wanna show you this zone run active recovery. Let's go back over to stride and let's scroll down, scroll down, to the final mile, mile, mile 26, 271 watts was my average for that last mile, which Strava showed to be an active recovery. Anything up to 290 watts is an easy pace, according to Stride. So 271 watts, I was only putting enough power in to run an easy run. And my friends, I gotta tell you, I was giving it everything not to stop and walk. So this is what I want you to take from this video, from my race, from my poor pacing. And of course, this is why the six Ps was invented. Proper pacing prevents P 
piss poor performance. I did not pace properly and that is why my performance suffered because in the beginning of the race I ran much too fast. I was trying to get my power up where Stride said it should be and ultimately I just blew out all my glycogen stores early in the race and I was unable to finish at that same pace. Now this marathon for me, this was textbook. This was a textbook way to run a marathon incorrectly. This might have been my 51st or 52nd marathon and yet I still fell into that trap of going out too quickly because I didn't base my pace on how I felt on my training, I based it on a number. Now here's the thing. I probably would have questioned the number of 344 watts if I had looked back at my 2022 Boston Marathon race. Because in the 2022 Boston Marathon, I also ran by power and I ran one of the best races that I've ever run. In fact, I finished the last Boston Marathon feeling absolutely fantastic. Like I gave it everything, but I didn't bonk. I felt strong, you know, obviously tired when you're running a marathon, feeling a little tired is gonna be normal, but I finished the race feeling strong and I didn't feel trashed at the end of that race like I did at the end of the Tallahassee Marathon. So I wanna show you that race. So let's just click over to the 2022 Boston Marathon and we can see right here, this yellow line on this chart is my power output. And you can see it is basically a horizontal line. Now there are a lot of ups and downs, but ultimately over the course of the race, it is a horizontal line. Let's just click back over to the Tallahassee Marathon and you can see from the halfway point, it's just, it's going down, that's a decline. But also the Boston Marathon, my average power down here was 320 watts. Now I know that I just missed my recommended power by one. So Stride recommended that I run the Boston Marathon at 321 watts. For the Tallahassee Marathon, something changed in the algorithm and now Stride was recommended that I run a 344 watt average marathon. It seems clear to me 321 as an average would have been far more appropriate for me to run the Tallahassee Marathon than the 344. I actually went into the Tallahassee Marathon feeling pretty good, feeling confident, feeling fit, feeling like I was ready to run a good race. And I think I still could have run a good race if I hadn't have started out so fast. So my next race is the 2023 Boston Marathon and you better believe that I have learned my lesson and although I will still run by power, I will not be using the 344 watts. I will probably go with what I did last year as that seems a little more representative of my fitness. Okay, let me just put one more chart up on your screen. This is the chart from Chorus. This is the data that my Chorus watch gathered for the race. And in green, we've got the pace. The purple dots are my stride length and then there is a red line beneath that indicating my heart rate. Let me just see if I can actually expand this last half of the race just a little more for you guys. There we go, that looks much better. My pace does actually, well, it's it's not too bad up here, but it does start to drop at least in the last quarter of the race. But what I wanna draw your attention to is also how my form changed. My stride length right here around the halfway point was about, look at this, it, four feet right at the high end of threes to four feet. Then if we get down here to some of these lower ends, I'm getting down to the low end of three feet. So my stride length is actually shrinking as I'm getting more tired, which makes sense because I'm not putting as much power into those steps. But also I want you to see my heart rate. Right now, my heart rate at marathon pace is comfortably around 155, 156, maybe up towards 160, but it's right there around 155 where I'm comfortable, I'm running at marathon effort. Something that I think that I can maintain for an entire marathon. But I want you to look at my heart rate here. It's getting down right there. We're in the low 130s. Let's see if it goes down. Oh, there we go, 128 right here. Let's move along a little more. Did that get down into the low 120s? I don't know, but we're talking at low 130s to high 120s. And that is a pretty easy effort for me. So by the end of the Tallahassee Marathon, I was running at an active recovery pace at almost an active recovery heart rate. And yet I was running as hard and as fast as I could. And ultimately that comes down to just running out of fuel. There is nothing else to say. I started out too fast. I burnt through all that glycogen. Now, even though I took three spring energy gel each of those spring energy gels is 180 calories and I took Powerade on the course, it was not enough to overcome that glycogen depletion from just going out too hard in the beginning. Again, this is a lesson. Once you bonk, you cannot recover from it. You cannot fuel your way out of a bonk. You have to fuel before and manage your pace appropriately in order to get to the end of the marathon. And for me, that is the beauty of the marathon. That is where the challenge is. Every race is an experiment. And even though I didn't get the race time that I wanted, again, I got the race time that I deserved because I tend to look on the positive side of things. I'm actually pretty happy with how I dug deep 
and I didn't walk. I really wanted to. I felt like a petulant child towards the end. I just wanted to pack it in. I wanted to end the race and just go home. And yes, that probably would have made for a little bit more of a sensational video, but when it comes down to it, I'm glad I didn't do that. I'm glad I finished the race. And ultimately, three hours, 20 minutes and 23 seconds is a pretty good marathon time. And I can't say I'm unhappy. I'm actually pretty happy. It was a good race. Oh, and the race itself was absolutely beautiful. If you ever get a chance to run the Tallahassee Marathon, I recommend you give it a go. It's beautiful. The weather is usually pretty good. It's challenging, but not too challenging. Well, clearly it was too challenging for me, but for you, it'd be just the right amount of challenging. Good day out running a marathon. Alright, my friends, if you have made it to this point in the video, first of all, thank you very much. Second of all, why don't you put that face emoji with the X's for the eyes, like a dead face emoji, because that is exactly how I felt at the end of the Tallahassee Marathon. Guys, my name's Matt. This has been my race recap of the Tallahassee Marathon. Don't forget to let me know about your successes and setbacks of last week's running. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.